The Brisbane Broncos, the club who, if not for a miracle, would have been the 2023 Premiers, but still do get to take home the title of being the hottest team in the NRL. I was sat next to a Brisbane fan at the 2023 Grand Final. The guy had been a nervous wreck all throughout the pre-game, and the last thing I wanted to do during the game was jinx it for him or congratulate him prematurely because one of the worst things in the world is there being a neutral next to you being all happy and friendly while you're riding the emotional roller coaster of a grand final. So I waited until it was a certainty. I waited until Ezra Mam crossed for his third try to make the score 24 to 8 and I tapped the Brisbane fan on the back in a sign of congrats mate you've done it. The Broncos had played over 2,000 minutes up until that point in the 2023 season. And yet the 25 minutes after Ezra Mam's try have completely flipped the way that we remember those first 2,000. 2023 won't be remembered as the positive year it was for Brisbane. It'll be remembered as the year they had the Premiership won and went home empty-handed. In 2024, Kevin Walters faces a decision. Do you lock the demons of Grand Final Night in a closet and move into the new season with a blank slate? Or do you draw on the pain as motivation and put a target on the head of the Penrith Panthers, looking to take back what they stole from you? Take one look at Payne Haas. I think I know which of those will be doing. As with most successful clubs in any year of the NRL, there are more outgoings than incomings for the Broncos this season. I'd say their biggest transfer gain is Fletcher Baker from the Sydney Roosters. He's been a consistent first grader down in the eastern suburbs. He's never particularly set the world alight, but he has always consistently done a job in the front row. He strikes me as almost a Corey Jensen type that the Broncos can just rely on to come in and play at a 7 out of 10. He won't play as a 10, but he won't play as a 5 either. And of course he is coming in to replace the guy who I think is their biggest transfer loss, Tom Flegler. Obviously a very two-horse race for their biggest loss this season between Flegler and Herbie Farnworth, but Flegler is an origin front rower. He's a guy who I think has grown immensely in stature ever since he came into first grade with the Broncos. And while I've got a lot of faith that Brisbane have the talent coming through to just fill spots in their outside bags, I'm not as confident about the forwards. I don't want to see another season a bit like the early years of this Broncos squad where Haas and Carrigan are doing all of the heavy lifting. To win a premiership you need a complete forward pack and Flegler absolutely provided that for them so he will be sorely missed and it's going to be quite a challenge to fill that spot. My first talking point for the Broncos this year is can they dust themselves off? Now it's always tough losing a grand final. Most teams we see lose grand finals really struggle to get back up emotionally and get back to the grand final the season after. Obviously we saw Penrith do it between 2020 and 2021, but since then, South Sydney didn't get back into the grand final, Parramatta missed the top 8 entirely, so history is not on the side of the Broncos when it comes to that, and it's going to be a real coaching challenge for Kevin Walters to get this relatively young side back up and energetic again to go at it. I am very confident that this Broncos side will continue to perform at a high level. I'm not sure if they make the grand final, it's just because I think Penrith have to be one of the teams there and there are a lot of other sides who I really like this season, but they are every chance of being there. If we see another Penrith and Brisbane grand final, I think that's completely expected. A lot of comparisons have been drawn between the Broncos side of 2023 and the Panthers side of 2020. And if the Broncos can replicate what those Panthers did, well, we're in for a hell of a ride. My second point, which I alluded to earlier, is filling the gaps left by Herbie, Flegler, and Capewell. Now, in the outside backs, it seems like Southern Cobo is locked into that center position, and so there's a vacant spot on the wing, and there's a few contenders for that role. Lots of people have spoken about Dean Mariner, who is a young, very damaging outside back. There's obviously the likes of veteran Corey Oates, who somehow has struggled to find his way into this side in recent years. And even the likes of Jordan Pereira, who probably won't be in that race for that spot, but has always done a pretty good job coming in for Brisbane, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's probably next cab off the rank when it comes to injury cover. Given that Brisbane are currently in a premiership window, I think I'd be going with Corey Oates, just so much more experience, he's played Origin, he's played in Grand Finals before. I just trust him probably a little bit more than I would trust Mariner at this stage of his career. But it really depends the direction that Kevin Waters is looking to go because Mariner is a guy who, once you put him in first grade, he could be there for the Broncos for the next 10 years. 
Filling the role left by Thomas Flegler, obviously there's Fletcher Baker coming in who I mentioned before, but I think Xavier Willison is going to play a much, much bigger role for the Broncos this year. We saw him be super effective for the Maori All-Stars in the All-Stars game, and just looking at him, he seems like another genetic freak that somehow the Broncos have managed to unearth in their front row. I think we'll see him really prove his worth to the Broncos this year, and to be honest, I don't think it will be very long before him and Payne Haas are the two starting front rowers for Brisbane. Then the gap left by Kurt Capewell, who goes off to the Warriors. Obviously, Brendan Piakura seems like the guy who logically comes in and fills that position. He's being spoken about in very, very high regard by those in the know around the Broncos. He is extremely highly rated. Jordan Rickey will face more responsibility now. He'll probably be the go-to back rower for Brisbane, but He's played a reasonable amount of first grade now, and this is definitely the stage of his career where he should be taking that step up anyway. So yeah, I do think Brisbane are well equipped to deal with those outgoings by replacing from within. They've got the young talent to do that, and I think it's a scary prospect for the rest of the competition that this side that made the grand final is able to regenerate so well with three pretty significant losses. Finally, my last talking point for the Broncos is can their young guns cut down on errors? We saw a fantastic season from Reese Walsh last year. I don't think anyone denies that. His freewheeling attacking style, just unstructured playing what's in front of him, was amazing to watch. But that came at a price for the Broncos. Walsh made 53 errors over the course of the season, with the second worst being only 45. Even third spot goes to Selwyn Cobbo with 39 errors, so these Brisbane backs were making a lot of errors compared to their counterparts in other teams. In rugby league, coaches have sympathy or understanding for big, tired front rowers making errors, but there's very, very little sympathy for the outside backs that do it, and I understand perfectly that a lot of those errors came from attempting extravagant attacking plays that didn't quite work out, but People that watch Brisbane would know that that's not the case for all of them. Even in the grand final, we saw Selwyn Cobbo make an error out of his own end, which you just can't afford to do in a grand final, or any big games for that matter. My point is that if these young gun outside backs can reel that in and really cut down on the errors they make this season while maintaining their attacking output, that is an extremely scary prospect. And logically, that's what will happen. Young players do make errors, and as they play more NRL, they learn more about when to take chances and when not to. If Brisbane fix up that area, I think it goes a surprisingly long way between them being in second place in the NRL and them being in first. So this is my best 17 for the Broncos this year. Obviously, a lot of this stuff already seems predetermined, like Selwyn Cobbo shifting into the centers and Brendan Piacura starting in the second row, but I do have Corey Jensen starting in the front row. I mentioned that I rate Xavier Willison very, very highly, but I think Jensen has done a really, really good job for the Broncos in recent years, and I think he's deserving of that starting spot, at least for the start of the season. Just give him an opportunity there and see what he can do. Then in the 14 jersey, I have Corey Pakes. Now, Pakes has seemingly fallen off the face of the earth. Obviously, everyone's talking about Blake Moser, but Tyson Smoothie was preferred over Pakes towards the back end of the season. I see what Smoothie brings, but I like the versatility that Pakes has. I think I'm pretty confident putting Pakes at lock at various points throughout the game. Just let Carrigan either play as a front rower or have a little bit of a spell on the bench. And that's something that I don't think Tyson Smoothie necessarily has. It's something that I think is really important for four teams. I like them not just being a backup hooker, but being a versatile player, and Pakes does that. So I would have him there in my 17, but I will admit that it is a little bit strange when a player like that just gets dropped and barely sees reserve grade again, and it often is a sign that there's something deeper at play that I do not know about. As I mentioned, it's always tough getting up again after losing a grand final. Teams really struggle to do it, but I think this Brisbane side is one of the few that can, and quite possibly will. I've got them almost locked into a top four finish and uh, I'd be very surprised if they weren't at least in the preliminary finals. So let me know what your thoughts are on the Broncos this season. Can they dust themselves off and go back after the premiership and how do you think they fill the spots left by Herbie Farmworth, Kurt Capewell and Thomas Flegler? Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.